welcome to Eyes to Heaven. I'm Jen, and today I'm here to talk to you about the next thing that God wants me to say, which is, you know, I'm I'm talking about the pillars of creation here. Okay, this is the pillars of creation, uh, and this is going to be the introduction video about it. And what do I mean by that? Um, so I hope you stick around and you listen to me because this is so important. Oh my gosh. And I've always wanted so much more fanfare for any of these videos. Um, but you know, gotta stay humble here, I guess. When I usually talk on this channel, when I, when I am doing what God told me to do, he tells me to talk about constellations, and it's not astrology, okay? The Bible says that the stars are for signs and seasons, and signs are constellations, and each constellation is a picture of either who God is, what God does, or how he operates in some capacity. The entirety of the sky is God's throne. God sits in the heavens, right? The firmament, the sky, he sits on top of it. It is his throne, and the earth is his footstool, okay? And so this is of utmost importance. Uh, people have been taught to think of these things in a different way. Um, we have been brainwashed to view things from a modern scientific lens when that is not how these things should be viewed at all, okay? And I know that sounds cuckoo, um, but... The heavens and the understanding of the heavens are so important um, because we can see God's patterns in the sky, okay? Um, and I'm not talking about for div divination or anything like that. I'm talking about creation and how creation came to be, okay? And all of the sky, everything about it shows God's glory, from how beautiful it is to what it represents, okay? It is God's glory. Why? Because God sits on top of it and moves it all and makes everything come into being through it because the sky is like the source code for creation, okay? And we can look into that source code and we can see patterns that God creates, okay? For example... Um, every Bible story is uh, written in the stars. We can see different people from the Bible in the stars. Uh, and we can see Jesus especially um, because he's God, right? We can see his story in the stars, right? And that's, you know, that's super important for that. There's also um, false gods. So the world tells us that, you know, if you look at Greek, Greek mythology and like even Chinese mythology and stuff, you can see all the pictures of these things in the sky. And that is, and we can use these things as patterns to further understand what exactly is implied uh, for each constellation and the stories that surround these constellations. Because each constellation in the sky is a picture of a set of ideas uh, and words and stories um, that we can pick through and we can see um, what God means by them, okay? False gods are like these demigods, right? These pictures of, you know, um, I don't know, Venus, right? Um, you know, Dionysus, right? There's a picture of Dionysus over in like Virgo area, right? And that's a false god, right? But our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the great I am, who will be who he will be, sits on top of everything. And he is the one who controls everything to his glory. So we can use uh, all of these mythologies to find root words uh, and all of this stuff to understand what God means. Um, we also know that Jesus is the word of God, right? And the spoken word speaks everything into being, right? Because there is nothing made that was not made without him, right? This word. And all of the words in the world from every language are up in certain constellations, all the roots of all these things. 
um, and we can ascertain uh, what God means by this. And that's kind of the gist of what this video is going to be about anyway. I'm going to talk about a couple of constellations, um, but I want to get through some of the things first because we are talking about the whole pillars of creation, okay? So the kingdom of heaven, um, the stars influence everything. Mainly God influences everything. He upholds everything, right? But the stars do influence everything. And the kingdom of heaven itself is an inheritance for everyone who is willing to do what God told them to do, okay? Um, and it translates, like I said, on earth because the heavens govern what happens. Likewise, we see in the Bible that the violent take the kingdom of heaven by force. So if you are doing what God told you to do um, and you are following his commands, okay, then you are reaping goodness. And if you are doing evil, you are reaping evil upon yourself. Okay, there is a duality with constellations, right? There is this picture of, you know, if you're if you're doing bad, you're going to reap bad. You reap what you sow, right? Um, and so these you know, there's these principles, right? Um, but the, the sky itself, um, is the Ark of the Covenant. Okay. And I know that's hard for a lot of people to accept. Um, and I, I say that with full confidence, but also, uh, understanding what the implications of that means. Okay. I fully understand what the implications of, of that of that statement is. The Ark of the Covenant is the sky. The Ark, the root of the word Ark, means to hold or contain guard. And arcane, right, is one of the, um, the words that can be used with this root, right? And to close, right? So the Ark, let's think of the Ark of the Covenant. I used to be obsessed with it when I was a kid. I loved Indiana Jones. And I wanted so bad to see it. Um, before I died, I wanted to see it so bad. Even my cat is named Indiana Jones. Like I, I loved that Ark of the Covenant movie, and um, and I even like followed some people that said they had seen it, right? Um, and I don't doubt that those people think that they saw it, <laughs> um, but it's not a physical thing. Okay, it is the sky, uh, and I know maybe that's disappointing to some, but let's think about this. What was in the Ark of the Covenant? This might be a long video. It probably is. <laughs> uh, what was in the Ark of the Covenant? So first of all, we had the manna, right? Uh, what is manna? So manna is food that sustains people, okay? The Bible uses symbolically food is a word, right? The word of God, Jesus, is food, right? This, this bread of life is a picture of food. And there's pictures of him, like I said, all of this over the sky. Now, the other implications of me saying this is that the entire Bible is is not completely infallible. And it is absolutely not infallible. Um, there are some scribal pens that have messed with it. So I understand that some of the things that I say are going to conflict with that. But I am bringing you uh, what I am bringing you in full truth. Um, doing what the great I am told me to do and saying what the great I am told me to say. Okay. But there is a picture of Jesus too. So this, this picture of Aaron's staff, um, is an, an almond branch, right? Uh, or his, his branch is the almond branch and that was stuck in the ark, right? Um, that is, so the almond shape is a picture of a mandorla. And the mandorla in the sky is a picture of Jesus. So this Levitical priesthood branch is a picture of Jesus. And we know that we've we've heard that uh, in other ways how he's the great priest and things like that. Um, but that I'm also implying that um, Aaron in his totality uh, was tweaked to be a scribal error. Okay. But stay with me. So Moses, um, Moses also put the 10 commandments in the ark, right? And that's what the pillars of creation are. And that's what I'm talking about. So the 10 commandments can be seen, uh, written in the stones of the sky, right? Uh, God frequently says, um, that 
you know, he, he talks about the kingdom of heaven and Jesus talked about the kingdom of heaven a lot. And he likened it to so many different things and he used so many different parables concerning it. And not only did this help us understand what uh, the kingdom of heaven was, but he was also letting us know that God uses different words and different parables for the kingdom of heaven. Um, and one of those is stones. We are from God. If we are from the kingdom of heaven, we are from heaven. We are from that area, right? From the, he can bring stones for, through. So in the same way, um, God wrote with his hands uh, the Ten Commandments in all of creation in the stars. And I'm, this is what I'm going to get back to. Okay, so there are... The sky and the kingdom of heaven is so many different things. It, they're, you know, the Bible stories are echoed in here. Like this whole, the whole sky, all of the kingdom of heaven is a picture of God's glory because God sustains these things, right? He holds everything into place with this, right? He calls all the stars by name. You can't say that this star means something that it doesn't mean and have it stick, right? God is the one that holds all these things together. Um, and he is the one that has the final say so, and he keeps all of these mythologies, even all of these deceptions that people have about this stuff. Uh, he allows it to sustain his glory. And I know that sounds crazy, but, uh, that's, that's just how it is. So, um, that being said, um, so I am going to talk about the 10 commandments that are in each constellation, but this is the introduction post. <laughs> um, so I want us to keep some things in mind. Okay. All right, all of the constellations or all of um, the commandments were given at creation, okay? And the commandments hearken to different parts and days of creation. All of the commandments um, hearkens to a tribe of Israel or two, okay? Each commandment hearkens and each tribe is, it could be more than one and in one area. And it could be more outside uh, of the main ones but they're mostly the zodiac okay um because each zodiac hearkens to a certain tribe of israel okay uh, and um what got me on this journey um is that each commandment shows a misappropriation of the egypt uh of the egyptians of who god is so you can see different stories um or different studies, rather, of, that people have done of the Egyptian false gods and how they relate to the plagues, right? Um, and so uh, you can find those, right? Because every false god is a constellation. It's all in a constellation. Pe people, you know, there are verses in the Bible about people going up to the rooftops and worshiping the stars. And that's what, you know, that is um, symbology, right? It's symbolism for um, people actually worshiping false gods, right? Um, and so there's that, but also I want you to keep in mind, and I'm going to bring this up too, that each of the commandments harkens back uh, to a plague of Israel. So that's what got me on this journey in the first place, is God started showing me that each, uh, each commandment was or each plague was a result of the of Egypt breaking the commandments of God okay and so yeah that's that's what I've got uh with as far as principles and I'm gonna try to put those on the screen I might not um I mean to put uh organize this one a little better um because I realize that this is a lot and this is super de duper important uh they all are but this is super important so um, when we think about this, uh, when we think about all of these things being the pillar of creation, um, we want to think about how everything was created in a circuit. What do I mean by that? So the, the kingdom of heaven, so all the stars and everything that was created was created in like a circle. Have you ever seen, it's like the perfect proportion. It's like uh, one third proportion is like a spiral and it goes out to, I forgot what it's called. It's not Fibonacci, I don't think. 
Um, that's feels way off. <laughs> um, but it is like this picture of a circle. Okay. And it's like this. If you can see very close, maybe I'll put it on the screen if I can. So there's like a circle that starts and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, we are talking about circles because the constellation that hearkens to all of this in this introduction post, um, is Circinus in Norma. Okay. Uh, and I have touched on Circinus before, um, but not in this, not in this capacity at all. All right. Uh, not, not as elaborate as this is going to get. Okay. Um, so God created everything in, you know, this perfect sequence together um, in, you know, this perfect pattern, right? This is, creation is a perfect pattern. People don't realize it, but everything, I mean, people that are more pattern sensitive um, probably recognize that all of creation is in a perfect pattern, right? And so, Everything is based on Polaris. Okay, Polaris, if you've watched my video on Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, uh, Polaris is the pole star and it is representative of truth. And Ursa Minor in itself is a picture of the truth. And Cepheus, the king, he sits on top of the truth. His foot is on the truth. He is, his kingship is on the rock of the truth. Okay, he's built on the rock right? And, but this idea of the rock and everything goes, um, it goes all over the sky, okay? Because at the very end of heaven, which is where Sir Sinus and Norma are at the end of heaven, um, you see this picture of Cepheus and Truthhood, uh, there too in Apis, right? You have, um, things that harken back to that from Apis, uh, back to Cepheus, right? The root of ape is in Cepheus as well, um, but you've also got a picture of an elephant, okay? So you've got the elephant in Cepheus, and I spoke of that, about that when I did the Cepheus video. If you haven't watched that and you're curious, go watch it. Um, but there is this picture of the beginning and the end of heaven, okay? How do I know that the circuit isn't the end of heaven, the Circinus, right? Well, we go back to Psalm 19, um, which is when God is talking about the stars, uh, and well, D David, it's, I, I believe it's a Psalm of David, but he says that, um, in the stars has, he set a tabernacle for the sun who is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and his circuit is at the end of heaven. Okay. And the sun, uh, the symbol for the sun is a circle with a dot here. And I'm probably, that's really terrible drawing. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to put something else on the screen. So um, it's a circle with a dot in the middle. And if you were looking at the sky from the north, the dot in the middle would be pol Polaris. And the uh, extremities back here would be, you know, everything else leading this way, right? If you look at a map of the sky, uh, of the constellations. And so Circinus and Norma are at the end. They are in the southern hemisphere. Um, and they are a picture of a compass and a square. And this is a popular picture, uh, with certain, um, uh, cults, <laughs> uh, that are pictures of, you know, the foundation of what they, what they say they believe in. And I believe that these people at one point, especially at the top, probably knew what they were supposed to be doing. Um, but as I'll explain later, that will have been, um, misinterpreted pretty badly, uh, and obscured and perverted. Um, but so Sir Sinus itself, um, is a picture of, right, a compass, which is a, a, you know, if you're making a drawing compass to make a circle, you put, you know, the stick in the middle, right? The leg in the middle that stays, and then it makes a circle around just like the symbol of the sun, right? Um, and, and so I'm going to start with Circinus. I'm going to talk about Norma as well, but Circinus is a circle, right? And both of them have the, um, they all are a picture of the moral standard, right? If you look up mythology related to this, um, there's some really interesting stories, specifically Chinese stories, uh, about the moral standard and creation. Okay. M uh, melded together, but the roots here, 
we have roots of researching um, in circles, circus, circulate, if you think of a circus tent, right? Um, and then you've got Norma, right? Um, which is a level or a ruler, right? Like rules, right? Uh, and you have roots of knowing, cunning, noticing, cognition, recognizing, ignorance, nobility, right? You're noble if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, really. Um, notes, uh, normal rulers, precepts, and patterns. So this is all written here, too. Um, if you've, uh, a gnomon is a type of sundial that casts a shadow um, so that you know what time it is, right? And so, um, and there's the idea of, like, elements, right? You've got, if you ever looked at, like, certain planets in astrology are related to, like, uh, certain elements. Uh, and so you have this picture, this idea of, like, certain elements being related to certain types of the uh, parts of the sky. And really, in science, uh, they tell you that elements come from, you know, maybe... Um, meteors and things having fallen on earth um, but there's also roots of um, the first idea and principle of the cosmos has been mentioned right the zodiac the alphabet right because all of the you can see the alphabet in the sky too the alphabet pertains to certain constellations and that's probably true in all alphabets um, certainly in the Latin alphabet um, but you also have, um, the picture of shapes. And so, um, I've talked about this before, but in some different places, shapes like, uh, triangles, circles, and squares are used in like video games when people are denoting sorcery. And here's why. So at the beginning of creation, God created all of the Ten Commandments. He gave the commandments to man to follow. It was part of our creation and it was good for us, okay? God made these things because he loved us. He gave us rules because he loved us and it was for our pleasure and approval, for our belief and our faith and our trusting in him and for our relationship with him and he did it with his own hand okay um and he did this in order to um show show people uh, the direction that they need to go okay because the commandments they guide your life okay um this is you know the 10 commandments are not a joke it is a guide for your life right um, and what you're supposed to be doing. And it is a protection for you. When you do what God told you to do. Namely, you know, keeping the faith in Jesus, right? Because Jesus explained some of the commandments a little better. If you keep that faith in Jesus and keep the commandments. Um, then you will, it, you're going to have God's protection. And people like to argue that you can't, you know, have favor. Except, you know, um, God will bless the righteous. Uh, so, you know... This was all created with God's hand in order to, because he loves us, okay? Um, and when we don't do the commandments, um, it looks like this, okay? So, Sir Sinus is, uh, there's mythology related to Sir Sinus. And, you know, I thought it was really interesting mythology because I've seen this in the other parts of the sky too, so... This harkens to Circe, okay, who is like a demon priestess. She's like a priestess of demons, sorceress, witch, daughter of destruction, and the sun. Um, and she, you know, I think she met Odysseus, um, or maybe Jason and the Argonauts. I'm not sure which one, but she ended up like turning them all into pigs and different, she turns people into different animals. So there's a picture of like this you know, idolatrous, you know, adulteress here, um, who is creating iniquity, basically, and turning the whole of the kingdom of heaven, right, into filth, right? And so there are depictions of her holding wine, 
with like boars, which are unclean animals, right? Hanging out with them, sitting on a throne with lions on it, which is a picture of power, right? Um, and, you know, holding the scepter. And I've seen this picture in like Virgo before. Um, that's not necessarily what Virgo represents all the time, right? I talked about duality and how, um, you know, these things can also be pictures of uh, something good. Um, but the major picture of the Whore of Babylon, because that's what this is, the Whore of Babylon is in Sir Sinus and Norma. Because if you are... Everything is built upon the truth, okay? Everything is built on the foundation of Polaris, right? That Cepheus sits on and God sits and made everything on the truth, okay? And... You know, I talked about God talking about uh, the kingdom of heaven in different ways. The kingdom of heaven is also Eden, okay? And so we can see the tree of life, which is the truth, which is the bread of life, which is Jesus, right? We can see the truth um, and we should eat from that tree, right? But what is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Because it's all over the sky, right? Just like I said, you know, different, different constellations can be pictures of good and bad if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're still partaking of this information right and you are adding to it your idolatry and adulteries then you are eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil especially if you are a sorcerer you are a manipulator right uh then you're doing uh not good things right um and this is how sorceries come to be because we have sorceries people think of you know that stuff doesn't exist it absolutely does sorcery goes on today um people use wordplay in order to make their propaganda stronger you know they use sacrifices they do all these um horrible rituals in plain sight you know there's people that build buildings a certain way with certain shapes so that it you know it harkens to certain constellations and people just can't see that. They just don't know it because this is not common knowledge yet. Okay. Um, and so, you know, Circe herself is the bet is the worst picture of Babylon. Um, and she, she has knowledge of drugs and herbs and charms and potions, spells and chants, pharmacia, right? And there's parallels to obviously Jezebel and stuff there. But obviously pictures of Medusa, so there's a picture of Medusa in the sky and what that represents is like Pharmakia and the head of the dragon, right? And so she is a picture of that too. And if you're not doing the Ten Commandments that God gave and you turn around and you manipulate, this is who you become. And this is why, um, this is why I'm talking about these things because we are currently under the oppressors whose head looks a lot like Cersei. When we are under the bloody city, which is the kingdom of heaven, uh, that has become bloody because of the violence on earth, uh, violence against God and violence against his commandments, right? And so, you know, this, God created these things for good, but he also created it for good in order for people to be judged by it, okay? Because what good is it if people are just supposed to do it and they don't reap anything negative? Okay, uh, from not doing it because that would not be very, you know, that would not be good design. And so God created this in order to allot what needed to be allot into, allotted into whom. Okay, and the Bible talks a lot about inheritance. And, uh, you know, I touched on the fact that the, the kingdom of heaven needs to be, is to be inherited. It is our inheritance as God's people. Okay, and that translates on earth, right? Uh, and so this is the stick, this is the ruler by which God judges us by. In my last video, I talked about uh, Orion and Lepus, and it was pretty, um, pretty much like a rehash of some of the things I've said. Um, but Orion himself is a picture of someone that stands on the mountain, draws close to God, and, and holds something in his hand. He holds a few different things. He holds a horn of plenty. He can hold a ruler. He can hold a sword, okay? And when we are measuring correctly, when we are doing the Ten Commandments, uh, when we are keeping the faith in Jesus and all that, that turns to fruitfulness, right? 
and we hold the sword, we wield the sword of flame, okay? When we speak the truth, we hold the truth. And so one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible is when God turns to Job and uh, his buddies, you know, with that whole ordeal that was going on, and he said, who can loose the belt of Orion? What does that mean? Why would you loosen a belt? Why would you loosen a belt? Because you're fat. <laughs> okay. How do you get fat? You eat a lot. Uh, you eat a lot. And Orion does have a belt, right? If you're eating a lot, if you are digesting fatness and goodness, right, that God is giving you, then you're doing, you know, you're doing what Orion is doing. And this is a picture of who can give, who can God give, who can give knowledge, right? And who will God give knowledge to, right? Is he going to give, he gives it freely to everyone who wants to do what they're supposed to do, right? If you want to turn to God and do what you're supposed to be doing, God is going to show you what you're supposed to be doing and he's going to show you the truth, right? And so, you know, this, this whole realization that I'm giving now um, is for everyone, okay? Because God, you know, God created everyone. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to make a lot more sense as I go through uh, this entire series. Um, but just know that Israel was meant to be everyone. Everyone is meant to be God's children because we are all his firstborn God created us all. There's none of us that he didn't create. Okay. And so this is meant for everyone and everyone is supposed to be doing it. And it's not hard. God's yoke is light. Um, it is the scribes who has, they have confused everyone and they have put hardcore standards on people that aren't necessary. They've either told you you don't have to do anything and you can be as amoral as you possibly want and God would still save you. Or they've told you that, you know, you can't, uh, you can't flip a light switch on a certain day at a certain time, right? And that's neither of those are correct, okay? The way is very narrow and those that find it are few. And I'm hoping that those that find it are much more um, than I see in my day-to-day -day life um, and that you know, the numbers of them increase exponentially. Because when God told me all this, you know, he said that he's not going to move his His hand, he's not going to remove his hand without mercy or without people turning to him, okay? That's what this is about, okay? This is turning everyone's heart to back to the Lord God, okay? That's what God wants when he gave me this one in particular, um, he wants people to remember. He wants people to see that what I'm telling you as his messenger today um, is the truth. People, people, you know, he wants it. He uses it as a wooing tool. Um, it is a, you know, it is a sweet music because this is, it's like once you realize that this is the way that things are, Everything, you know, all of the oppression, all of the slavery just melts away, right? It just, your spiritual bondage is gone, right? And God created this in wisdom and he's the greatest counselor. So if you, you know, if you are hearing me now and you're not sure about what I'm saying, take it up with God, you know, don't go to man, you know, I don't have to sit here and teach you, okay? I'm not... I'm not supposed to be a teacher. I'm a proclaimer. I'm just telling you what I know. The only person that's going to teach you anything is God. He is the God. You seek him to know what the truth is because he created everything in truth because he is the truth and the way and the life, right? So people have just forgotten and hopefully, hopefully they, you know, remember. And so after this, I, I'm really interested now that I've gotten through this and not had to completely pause. Thank God. Um, we'll see what happens in editing. But um, so what happens after this is I'm going to give the next constellation. The next constellation that I talk about um, will probably be more than one. Well, it is more than one. I know that for sure. Um, and it is going to... Um, hearken to a commandment and a tribe 
and a plague and a part of creation, okay? Um, so, and I'm probably only going to put, I might put these out, like I might make all of these and then put these out at the same time. Um, just so that I can have them all out at the same time. Unless God tells me otherwise, you know, that's what I'm planning to do now. We'll see. Um, but that's it. That's it for today. So. <sighs> so that's all. Uh, thanks so much for watching. And I will see you next time. Later. <laughs>